So we'll see how this turns out. This is the basement of the farmhouse. And um, I'm busy taking apart the ductwork. And the wet inspector was over Sunday night, Sunday evening. And uh, we, we kind of went through this. And it's, it's really sad, folks. Okay, what happens is this is the old oil furnace. And what they did was, this is the return air here with a canvas connection to stop uh, vibration going through the house. Better installs actually do this. This is about the best anybody did here. The rest is downhill. So here's this, your supply plant I'm here. It usually goes up here and has a couple takes off, take off. So they cut this down. They didn't use the proper top on it. They didn't escalate it. They didn't turn it. They didn't drive clean it. They didn't do anything. They just capped it and put foil tape around it, which is leaking all over the place. There, maybe you can see there. And then you usually use something with a swoop in it. It directs the air not to hit flat. It goes round. It almost kind of spins like a round duck, but it at least directs it down. Now that that supply air plenum was cut, and now it's feeding the Scotty SS add-on wood furnace through the return air slot or where they cut it anyways and see this here that was just the thing to pull your ashes and stuff it's supposed to have an automatic damper on it on a spring you see this turns like that and it's supposed to pull up on the chain which is supposed to give the primary air to the stove, but it's all it's all bent and everything needs lubrication and stuff needs needs some can and that's the uh, last chamber and that goes of course a couple feet back to the back of the stove what you do with a stove like this is you light it and you put all your kindling and stuff here right at the front and you stack three or four logs at the back a couple you know that way and a couple over top this way so the air moves through them and you light this once you get your draft going it's supposed to go up the chimney so most people would have if they knew what the hell they were doing would have taken this Scotty see Scotty SS add-on made by Kerr I didn't know it was made by Kerr and uh, it should have gone right here right right where I'm standing here and then you could have taken the chimney stack off and gone right in here. But uh, they didn't do that. <laughs> That's the stack there. And that goes out and that goes around the back of the supply and return air plenum and the whole length of the oil furnace. <sighs> this bothers me, folks. And then at 90s over there in the corner. And right here, if I can get in there, I'm not a little guy, eh? Right here, this thing is what we call a draft diverter. <laughs> you know, it's, it's supposed to be used straight up and down. It's on, oh, about a 50 degree angle. So once it opens, it stays open. This breaks the draft uh, action of the chimney, which puts a lot more heat in the stove and can back up and cause a, cause a, lot, of, a lot of problems. So anyways, it goes back, what's this, another six feet, eight that way. Each elbow's five feet, five foot off the main stove. They hooked it into two fan center uh, sensing temperature. Uh, tur they turn on and off, they got a coil in them. And they turn on and off as the heat uh, gets hotter and shuts it off as the heat gets lower. Supposed to be on a two-speed motor, but I don't I doubt they did that here, and that's a fan center. And they hooked it in with this one here. One of them should have been disabled, probably this one for the oil furnace. Anyways, you can see you can't well you can't see, you can't get in here to service anything. Um, that's the burner down there. It's really hard to see. It's called a Riello. Riello burner burner will burn uh, third grade oil, which is like your used motor oil and stuff. You just gotta run it through, you know, six or eight filters in line. And then uh, set this this burner up for 
like a light, lighter viscosity because of course you're not going to have the viscosity with the used motor oil and this will actually burn um, used motor oil so I'm not sure the heat exchanger I know the guy I met uh, that had his truck here that we had towed out of here with that farm tractor he pushed the emergency button but he had to keep pushing and that's not a good sign so probably the photostat in, in, inside the burner is not seeing uh, a proper fire or proper light and it's shutting down on emergency because well you don't want to flood the the, the blast chamber inside the oil furnace with raw oil because eventually it will explode you'll get big puff rings coming out the chimney and you can blow apart your heat exchanger and then all that soot goes up through your house so yeah so we're changing all this this is coming out of here just this duct <laughs> the duct itself just the way they did it to come off you know here which is a supply to the other side of the house they knocked a hole through the wall and put another and that's not bad at least they gave it the 45 here you got your swoop right same with this but this 45s okay actually 90s and then you 90 again <laughs> I never seen nothing like this sorry I gotta laugh I've been laughing and and I didn't spread this yet look at this this is a drive cleat and it's a piece of metal, you know, a bit longer. See it up there with the tab? I pulled that back with my fingers so I could slide that drive cleat off, and that's what holds your duct together. It's supposed to be, like, the two pieces folded over are supposed to be close together as possible to slide this drive cleat on. <laughs> they had to make a piece of metal here for this one. Where is it? I think it's over here. <laughs> here, I'll show you. Here's a, this is a normal drive cleat right there. <laughs> That's a nipissing a drive cleat, I guess you call it. I don't know. I shouldn't call it that. There's probably lots of servicemen up here that are very talented and sheet metal workers, but <laughs> this guy wasn't one of them <laughs> for sure. So then you go through just a piece to add on to make up this. And then for some reason they swooped again and they did another 90 degree here. And then from the 90 degree they went in a Y branch, we call it. You see it goes off in this duct here and this duct here and it wise off and feeds this part of the house the new addition part but again you got a, four, a 90 degree a 45 here then you have a 45 here I don't think I can pan out anymore and then you have you know some extension ducts some one or one foot or 16 inches or 18 whatever that is and then we go back into it. And this is just to keep the headroom in here. I, I wouldn't care about that. I'm just going to go straight across with the ducts. I'm not going to put all this in here for the blower. No wonder the blower blew. <laughs> Seized the blower. Um, anyways, and then they fortified back down again to go straight another foot. Then they fortified and fived up and over 245. So there's your 90 again. And then we go all the way over to there where they start using the bottom takeoffs well these are actually side takeoffs but anyways they use those and you can see like this says foot of stairs someone marked it rad by front door um, glass door which is uh, the bottom floor and then there's one upstairs but the silly part is this duck this duck here this is useful this does feed everything nicely and then there is enough CFM I'd imagine with the higher rate blower with a higher uh, spinning CFM blower so here's the other side and it did the same thing at 45 exactly what I just showed you then we get to here we 45 again 45 again then we go into a 90 sure why not why not add more feet to the duct and more static pressure is that's the word I was looking for static pressure this this system is a static duct pressure screw up fuck up whatever you want to call it Anyways, they did all this over here. And I gotta go in this little room here and hope you can see this. To run this duct, and it's all it really has to supply is that run over there, right up in here. That's a run there straight off of it. This is a takeoff here. It's actually not a takeoff, they use it as a jumper box. And that goes to the second floor. The rest of it, <laughs> I could have used a, a round run here which they did from that duct. Again, they didn't need it for this. So they ran this duct all the way over here with all those 45s and 90s 
like I said, they didn't know what they were doing, and then they used the top takeoff. There's some side takeoffs. Too small a pipe, four inch, five inch, five, uh, that might be six there. But then, and, and another one here, that's five. And then they ran all these pipes over here <laughs> to all the way to the other side of the house. Remember, we started over there, right? <laughs> so what this should have done was this run here, you can hear. Hear that? Here and there? That's mouse poop. There was 150 mice in here, and I'm sure they were into the ductwork. I seen one up in the shower, run out of where there was a, a grate missing for the supply air in the shower upstairs. Most kept coming up. So anyways, this should have been supplied. I don't really mind that they use this because there's pipes here and they didn't know how to move copper and drop down the ABS and stuff. Probably be a bit of a pain in the ass to do. So I might keep this. This isn't impeding nothing. But I will drop it down here so that it 90s nicely and then it comes like this and then we'll probably go right to here with it and then we'll take a duct a round piece of 5 inch and we'll go right into the plenum of the Scotty furnace that's going to be sitting right in front of the stack here and the same for these pipes here again I'll probably run some 6 or 7 inch maybe even 8 we'll see how much um, static pressure is in that but we're going to run that across from the Scotty on the couple of takeoffs again round, round pipe and then we're going to 90 and 40, 45 and 90 them right into these pipes. So we're going to cut them off here. So we don't need all that shit. We don't need all that run down there. We can do all of this with three pipes. Uh, the fourth one, I'm not even sure I need that one. I think this one uh, doesn't say. I'm going to have to search where this one goes. This might go to the second floor shower. I'm not sure funny the way they did all this so I may have to do another run straight off that duck over here to here but the straight runs are the way to go you want the shortest runs with the most uh, CFM you can get and then you put your dampers in either end or you can you can put them up in the in the grates where it comes through in the floor through your floor or you can put it right at the furnace but you got to damper it down you got to you got to balance the system and <laughs> there's no way this house is balanced I'm sure the other side just sweats like crazy. So, uh, how many minutes are we in? Well, we're 12 minutes in already. I didn't expect to spend this much time. We're, we're heating with the heater down here. <laughs> this is a thousand watt uh, Honeywell heater or something. Sunbeam. Then I had one of those grates in the front of it that overheated it, so I tore the grate off. It works great down here. A thousand watts heats this whole section here. And I'm not cold, I'm actually sweating a little bit. A little bit of a sweat here anyways it's a lower basement again walk through the other side and here's their crazy ductwork again um, the return air which is here way too small so what happens when you supply more air upstairs what's gonna happen in your basement what's gonna happen where this the, the furnace is sucking back down it's gonna create a ne negative pressure in your basement and and it can pull your smoke from your chimney and stuff from your fireplace and the fireplace down here can sit down here pull it down you got negative pressure into the basement so that supply air that uh, makeup air they call it that's got to come from somewhere and if you uh, got gas in the house and you're starting to suck propane and gases back down your chimney boy oh boy you got co2 and aldehydes and nasty gases and stuff but again even here the jumper box that they did isn't necessary, so I'm going to change that. Um, I'm going to go straight over. I'll joist line this right across, and I'll paint this another joist. And as all the joist lining is, is metal here, nailed. And then you got your seam, sort of like a drive edge. It's like an S cleat. Just fits in the next metal piece here, like this one inside the other, like a sandwich. I'm going to joist like that. But I'm gonna I'll paint all up in here. I'll paint it with some rot resistant, mold resistant paint up in there. And then any moisture that comes out of the house and comes through the ductwork isn't gonna to start to mold up your beams and stuff. And that's the thing that a lot of heating guys miss. They really don't have the time because they're paid by how much they can install, not how well they do it. <laughs> Sorry, but that's the truth. 
Anyways, here's the supply duct that just ends here. Look at that. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that. I hope I will see when I put it up. They've got this as a jumper box. And supply air, it's, it's just wrong. I'm going to go straight over. This one was cut off. There's your damper. Here's how you balance your system. There's your damper right there. You see that? And when the handle's pointing this way, that's the way you're, if they put the, the handle on properly, it'll point the way the damper is. So as you damper it down, there's your 45. That's, you know, that's 30% 30, 30 air only flowing out of that hole into that duct if there was a duct there, like this. But even this is stupid. They've run extra duct here, and I, I'm one for going straight to the source. If you're not, uh, going to build your basement. This is never going to be a basement apartment, you know. I'm, I'm just under, let's see here. I'm just under six feet tall, okay? And, uh, well, we got six inches above me, maybe eight. So six foot eight, maybe basement at the best. So it's not going to be anything. We might do some microgreens and I might white whitewash the old walls because it's still pretty clean in here for a really old basement. You can see where there's been leaking damage, but they buried so many big old pipes into the dry wells out there and then off the shop, everything drains down from the house there. So there's no water on the house at all. The same over there, I don't know if you can see it or not. It gets darker as I get in there too, with my shadow too. But there's some uh, contamination there. And up there, that used to be a window, so I might window that again and put in a window well, dig down to the footing and fill it full of stone and rock for a drain, for a footing drain. And then maybe there's, you know, go, go into one of his big O's. He's buried this stuff everywhere. This old pipe here. The perforated and the non-perforated is all glued together in this place. So anyways, back to the runs. This one goes up and it's, it's not too bad, but I wouldn't have run it from over there. I would have run it right off of here, off the edge, right into here and up into here. And then we could damper it down if there was too much cubic foot per minute or too much flow. And you can see there must have been because someone has, this is the damper here, almost shut off. So the north window, I guess that's in the bedroom above me. And even funnier, I don't know if you can see this, because it's really dark in here. But where is that jumper box I've seen? There's one there, up in there. I don't know if that's going to show up. I doubt it. Let's see if the other jumper box has enough. Uh, uh, we can see a little bit here. Here's the pipe, here. And then it's a square piece of duct. Um, Two and a half, three, in, uh, three inches by eight going to the second floor, squared off. You don't do that, but I guess they did. Maybe they wanted to insulate the wall more or something. I don't know, some weird stuff. And this pipe here comes from outside and feeds the giant fireplace upstairs, which I'm not using. We're putting in an airtight, uh, um, we're putting an airtight in there. It slides in. Anyways, so now that we're here, this is a 500 watt heater I got out of the Kinesis Lake dump. And it's covered in tar and paint and everything. They took some turps to it and stuff and cleaned it up. You can see she's getting hot down at the bottom. She's a little brown down in there, but I don't care. As long as it makes it through this year. It's heating this whole basement here. With 500 watts at 110, 110 volts. So there's the... Uh, pressure tank from the well. Well line comes in there. Main disconnect up there. It's kind of funny the way they hung it. That's going to have to hit the wall. I don't like that. And uh, then the hot water tank. And I'm going to go with an instantaneous water heater. I don't know if we're going to go propane or whether I'm going to pull a new wire across the yard from the shop where the hydro uh, pole is and the transformer and everything. The main hydro comes in. Because if I put instantaneous heat, I might just change this furnace that's in here to electric heat and then use wood and have the electric as a backup. I'll probably hardly use it, but yeah, it's better. It's better, and we're getting all these taxes from the Liberal government. 
the carbon tax and stuff. So oil and gas, he's going to smack 30-something, what, 32, 33% or something on that in the next five years. <laughs> Think about what your bill's going to be. And uh, carbon tax at the end of the year off your taxes and stuff. I don't know. I believe in saving the planet, but I don't believe in the poor paying for it every fucking time. Anyways. This was the blower that was in this furnace. And uh, I guess it seized the bearings. And they have half tore the motor off it here. So instead of fixing it, they went and got another blower. Right here. See in there? It's hard to see, but the blower is a lot smaller than the hole. <laughs> so they just put it up against there, and there's a three inch gap all the way around that blower sitting on a friggin' piece of wood. You're gonna love this. I nearly freaked. This is an extension cord. And what you do is you plug in the extension cord here, and that turns the blower on, this direct drive motor. And then they put the extension cord. I've taken it down so it wasn't like this. It was wrapped all through the cross ties for the floor. All through here, all around the duct here, and then down and back into the socket over there. And the fire the chief nearly shit his pants. He couldn't believe what was here. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a box like that. And then I'm going to louver it down or 45 it down. To a smaller size and make myself an angle that I can take that blower that's in there now because I actually prefer the two speed blower. It's got about five or six taps on it, which means from low to medium low to medium high to high or medium high, you know what I mean. You step it up till you're till you're going the fastest the motor will go. So what I'm going to do, Brian taught me years ago, I used to watch him do the wiring on the furnaces, and he's an electrician, he wasn't HV, you know, the guy was the best HVAC guy, sheet metal worker I've ever seen, the guy didn't even have his license for that, he was a licensed uh, master electrician. So he used to take fan centers, he would rip the, the whole controls out of the furnace, and he had his own plans and, and specs and drawings and stuff, and uh, he put in a fan center, and he put a temperature, one of those temperature probes up to the fan center and the furnace would run on low speed and of course there was electronic air cleaners back then. There still is, there's better ones I imagine now. So on low, it was filtering there in your house all the time and just a little bit more on electricity a month. You know, back then it was five, ten bucks a month. Um, then when the furnace comes on and it calls for high heat, it clicks out on the low speed and it goes to the speed tap that you've chosen for the house which is much more efficient and then again drop back down so that's what I'm going to do here I'm probably going to pick a little bit of a higher speed I'll probably pick a low medium for my low speed and then max for my higher the fat number blue the five tap I believe it is in that blower for the, the almost high it's high but not a medium high it's a little higher than that but uh, 5000 rpm I believe which is really whaling and uh, I'll probably do a shaft kit on here. I'll do a, I mean, a, a um, bearing kit, shaft and bearings. Usually, the bear, usually when the bearings get hot and they seize, um, you can't get the shaft out of the bearings for one thing. It's almost like they lock on. And uh, trying to smack it off, you usually ruin the shaft. So, for the cost of a shaft, you might as well buy a shaft and bearings, and we'll redo that blower. And that's what I'm going to use in the, the first greenhouse we build. We got a whole bunch of greenhouses coming here this uh, this summer if the deal works out with some other people. But uh, anyways, with the wet inspector, the funny part was he says, "Ken, let's have a look at the stacks. So let's have a look at this." The guy that I bought off has said, "No problem. Just keep her clean. Should be good. You won't have any problems." Where do you see this? I think we would have died if we would have lit this stove. I'm going to have to put this back on his tripod. Yeah, nice, eh? Look at the picture of my hand. Let's see. All right. Get rid of this cord. The story has been told about the cord. I'm gonna get rid of another screw. 
screw. Don't you be laughing at my uh, my uncle's. Uh, geez, you know you're gold when you can't read the side of your drill. Work center drill. Look at that, eh? See that? Isn't that custom? Woo! 4.8 volts, folks. Settle down, okay? Don't get too excited. It'll be all that voltage. <laughs> 4.8 volts. That's cute. I can't see the head of the bloody screws. Oh. This may not be working. Now, where do you see this? You don't want to come out of there, do you? Ah, maybe because there's a screw in there too, eh? I know, Mr. White Inspector put this back. I didn't want him to because, like, I'm not going to run this rig in furnace. See all the soot? See that shit? Let me put this drill down over here. I like the little uh, 4.8 drill because it gets into places my drill just can't touch. But anyways, let's push this back in the way it was. Now I've disturbed what was there, but this was that was your thimble. Not thimble supposed to be cemented in. Okay, let's get this camera back out and see if we can see how much crap. See, it's plugged. She's plugged. Full of creosote. The creosote's plugged in the chimney. Nice, eh? See if we can pan it up. There's some light behind us. It's hard to see. But anyway, she's plugged. That's nice and clean in there. I should have brought a flashlight, but that, that's that's got an inch all the way around it, all the way up that 90 degree. That pipe is probably just full of creosote. Just full. Anyways, it's a story of the add on furnace. Um, it's lucky I, I did my uh, sheet metal apprenticeship and stuff. I'm not going to film at all. I don't know how long this camera's going to last. But uh, here we go. Let's see if we can take down. This might just go for shit. Oh, <laughs> before, before, before we end the film here, this is a clean filter. You should do this monthly, folks. And that's what was in there. Disgusting, eh? Clean. Disgusting. You don't want to breathe that crap in. Ever. Never, ever, ever do you want to breathe that crap in. Anyways. You going to stay there, camera, or are you going to move on? Okay. Again. This is probably going to drop. This is the last screw. The last screw is always the worst one. Who doesn't have to use the screwdriver? The bigger, the better, the better. And I don't want to wreck this. I don't care if the other filters get wrecked, but it makes sense to wreck it. Screw there. 